Your next assignment is a linear work using wire as your material. Hopefully you've had a little time to experiment with wire and what you find interesting to do with it in addition to what I uh, demonstrated in the video. Another component to your assignment is not only are you going to recreate the appearance of an object in wire, but you're also going to make the object look as if it is representing some movement. So in the slideshow, there are three ways of doing this, um, and you can choose one. You might even come up with another of your own. It's up to you. One way to look at it is as things that appear aloft, things that look suspended in midair. And I'm going to show you two-dimensional images, but I think you'll get the point. With this work, yes, it is sort of a massive work, but the lines of this sculpture appear to be floating in the environment that encases it. In some ways, the sculpture sort of penetrates the environment that it is in because it rather reaches into it and moves through the atmosphere. This is one sort of way of looking aloft as if there was some force in the space that was uplifting the uh, whatever object you're choosing to represent, which by chance, if you chose to do an article of clothing, which could be very interesting, this might be a good option for you to explore. This is an illustration. You can clearly say um, what is indicated here. There's a fella and he has some elements of tableware that are floating in the air around him and he's in an interior envir environment. Oh. So this is one way where everything looks like it's been tossed up in the air. And just a little detail here. Notice that his hand is somewhat close to where the handle of that condiment carrier is. And the little lid from the teapot is still close to where it would be as if it was still able to close maybe and it's just kind of come undone. And here's another man who, oh, he's having bad luck. He's being booted out of something. So his uh, monocle, which that's always an interesting accessory. Maybe I'll go for that. His monocle is flying about. The coattails of his, of his uh, jacket are, and his cane and hat are all flying around. Another way to represent movement, and you've seen this, a lot of times um, film gives us the ability to see this. If you've ever seen the images of Edward Muybridge, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's time through repetition. And that is the repetition of lines. This is a very famous cubist painting by Marcel Duchamp, um, Nude Descending a Staircase. And you see the passage of time of this body moving through space, moving from the upper left to the lower right, with the legs moving and parts of the upper body moving as well. So this repetition of lines is what's creating the sense of movement in this work. And you could do this three dimensionally as well. Similar situation, this is a piece of fabric. And so they've made um, a repeat pattern out of this drawing. Um, it rather makes me think that they're dancing. But again, same repeated lines. And what I pointed out in the instructional video of how you would take an object and mold the same shape on it, that could come in very handy for doing this kind of uh, suggestion of movement by creating the same shape over and over again. Here's another one that's pretty darling, um, this little uh, dog. If you've seen a dog's tail wag, sometimes it really does look just like this, where it's moving so fast that it appears to be sort of uh, stopping in time. And this one really re makes me think about the fact that suggesting movement in uh, a static object you're trying to describe a passage of time, as I had in the, the first title slide here. So here we have a train going through an environment, and if you've had the pleasure of seeing a train where it has um, steam coming out of its chimneys, 
uh, it does do this like it puffs and puffs and moves and the puff behind changes as it goes along and uh, this drawing illustrates that effect very well and we observe a, a few moments where time is passing through this kind of um, movement representation. Traces through space. This is not so unlike New Descending a Staircase. This is a very famous um, futurist sculpt sculpture. And the idea of this sculpture, if you've ever walked in a swimming pool, th this sculpture reminds me of that where the, the environment your body's moving through is thick and drags on the body and pulls it back. This is what the sculpture reminds me of. So it's suggesting the space that's around it and how that space is affecting the human body, we're assuming, that's under there. And the human body is really covered up in all these planes. And as I mentioned before, photography really has illustrated this effect um, very well for us, where uh, we have traces of movement through time. See all the hands uh, flying about the typewriter. And this fella with his lit cigarette. I don't condone smoking. Another one you might be very familiar with is a directional warp. Again, photography comes into play here, but it's very effective. So here is a photograph of a race car from 1913. Bless you. Here's a photograph of a race car from 1913. And there is a, a warped image that's taken place because as the shutter opens and shuts, uh, it takes the amount of time that that car moved in the middle of its um, shutter experience. So the image shifted in, um, in accordance to that. This is also something that you might have seen very frequently in all of your life, probably in a particular genre you might be aware of called cartoons and comics, um, as such as. Roadrunner and Coyote um, are a perfect example of warpage to indicate movement. Since you have see that the, the Roadrunner's feet have altogether just disappeared and turned into um, lines. I don't really want you to do that, but this just illustrates what I'm talking about. So um, I look forward to seeing what you do. So you want to recreate an object and make it appear as if it's moving by using one of the uh, methods in this presentation or you suggest one. I am excited to hear about it.